Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome today to Crossing Paths Television Ministry, a ministry that has individual testimonies of what Jesus Christ is doing in their lives. And you may be the next guest on Crossing Paths TV Ministry. We are Hermitage, Pennsylvania, uh, where we live and we do and do our teaching and preaching and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I want to tell you something. You're not going to find any professionalism on this ministry, just people who love Jesus. And today I am so, I, this man has been with me for years. He's going to tell a story how he met Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He was not saved. He was raised in a church. He's going to tell all about it. But today he's a businessman and he knows Jesus. So if you're a businessman, stay tuned. Frank Kamovich, welcome to Crossing Paths TV. Thank you, Don. Glad to be here. Hey, it's I mean, a privilege. Uh, last time we talked to you, uh, we went to Israel too, didn't we? Well, we went three times. Three times. Three times, yes. And uh, it is a fabulous place. I wouldn't mind moving over there. I really had so <laughs> well, much you're gonna I like go, it. you're going to go there someday. Yeah, we'll have my spot picked out. It's in Elot. Yeah, my address is 777 Sunset Boulevard, Israel. Yeah. So in case you want to meet me sometime over there. Anyways, Frank, uh, you were raised. Let me about, tell me about your background. You're a businessman today, and you didn't know Jesus. Am I one time in your life? Right, exactly. In, uh, I was born and raised in a small town called Cuddy. We moved to uh, another town called Bridgeville. I started first grade there. And uh, between seventh and eighth grade, we moved back to Cuddy because my dad had purchased a gas and station that, there. Where's that, Pittsburgh? It's in, yeah, southwest of Pittsburgh, okay. outside of Pittsburgh. And uh, I started pumping gas in my dad's gas tanks. I was 13 years old. By the time I was 14 and a half, I was greasing cars. And by the time I was 16, 17, I could run the station by myself. Um, it was a place where uh, guys would come up in the evenings after work, and because we were open until 10 o'clock at night, and they would loaf there. And uh, they would talk about different things and all their stories. And uh, being as young as I was and listening to them, and uh, my dad always told me, too, that whatever I heard, that I keep my mouth shut. Keep your eyes and ears open, your mouth shut about what you heard and what you've seen there, the guys talking about uh, what they did and bragging about the conquest of women and stuff. And that sort of ingrained me in there. And I always said that uh, when I get my driver's license that I was going to go out and conquer the world too. So that happened when I did and I, I start running around. And by the time I was 18, 19, I was in the bars already. And uh, uh, in fact, I attended a bar for my uncle, bought a bar in Bridgeville. And I was, I was 19, I was attending a bar for him. But I also, when I was in the gas station pumping gas and in the bars, I would see guys come in that were married and committing adultery, and then I would run into their wives, and I would think, well, geez, what a pretty woman, and what a nice family, and here he's out running around. You know, I could never understand that, and I always said to myself that I'm going to run around when I'm single, but when I get married, that's going to be it for me. And uh, eventually, uh, I did get married, and I, I, I did that. I've been married for 58 years, been true to my wife all that time. And uh, But I, like you said at the beginning, I was I thought I was a good guy, because by the time I was 30 or 30-some years old, I'd quit drinking, I quit smoking, I didn't swear. Uh, I took care of my wife, I worked, and, and, and took care of my family, I should say. Were you going to church at all or anything like that? Uh, Occasionally I, just... I didn't go to church until we got a, my kids were born, my sons. I have two sons, and uh, I started back to church then to, to get them into Sunday school. What and, denomination were you raised in? Uh, Catholicism. I was Catholic. My yeah. wife was Catholic. And uh, we, we attended a church. I got married in church. Uh, and uh, But I never really attended church regularly. We'd go to Christmas Eve. We'd go to Easter, you know, like the normal things. But... Once we had the children, then we started going every Sunday. And uh, But yet I never really uh, uh, took it in. I, I, for some reason, I just it didn't, didn't accept. I was going there just for the reason of going there. A lot of people just go to church. Just to go, go to, to church, church. To, to make a show, so yeah. to speak, you know. And, it's a thing and to I, do, right? Right. The thing, I, had, I went basically to get my kids into Sunday school. I had to go to church to get the, my kids into Sunday school, my wife and I. So. And that's basically what I did. Well, once they were grown and they were on their own, then I, again I slid away from church. But again, I, 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 like I said, I was I thought I was a good person, and, and uh, I never realized that I would never make it into heaven. And uh, 
it was years later when I had moved to Sharon and went into business with my brother, and uh, we lost two baby girls. Or they were, one was a spinal bifida baby, and it lived eight weeks, and it passed, and uh, it tore my wife up pretty good. What and, happened uh, there? Did somebody tell you that the babies weren't in heaven? What happened there? Uh, yeah, when when the 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 second one, when we were both, we'd, we'd have a funeral, but we took it to the graveyard and buried it. And it was a priest was with me and the graveyard people and a funeral director and myself. And uh, we were walking back to the car and the priest told me because I didn't have a chance to baptize the baby, he says, well, maybe God's got some place for her. Oh, no. And even then, when I wasn't uh, attending church that much, I knew that, that that couldn't be because they taught you that you had to be good to get into heaven, to be sin free. If you were sin free, you were gonna get it to heaven. And I thought, well, how can an eight week old baby sin? There's no way a baby so, at eight years old can sin. It has to be sin free. So that statement made you start thinking then, right? Right, exactly. And I thought, well, I, he had to be wrong. I said, I, I didn't say nothing to him, I, but in my mind to myself, I'm, I, I said, he had to be wrong. That baby has to be in heaven. I, there's no way that it could be. And uh, anyhow, as time went on and uh, my wife had become born again from watching PTL on television. And she accepted the Lord. She tried to get me to read the Bible and stuff. And I said, I don't need that Bible. You read it. I says, I don't need it. I'm, I'm good. I'm all right. You read the Bible. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, eventually we were up to a store called Treasure Island and I had an urge to read. Uh, when I was younger, I used to read a lot and then I got away from it, but I had an urge to read again. So I'm looking at the book rack and I'm going through the book rack, it was a real long book rack, and there was the Westerns and the Harlequins and all the other mysteries and, and nothing appealed to me. And I got right to the very end and my wife's, come on, let's go, I wanna go home and make supper, hurry up, you know. There was a bright blue book there, it said, late great planet Earth. And I said, man, talking about the environment and everything, I said, I grabbed the book without thinking, bought the book and went home and after supper, I picked it up and started reading it. And I couldn't put the book down. And I read that book through in two nights. And I said, wow, the Bible's teaching me this? It was the late great planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. And I went and got my wife's Bible and I picked up the Bible and I flipped through to Revelation. It was the first thing I ever read in the Bible was Revelation. And the strange thing is I, I understood it. I didn't understand some of the symbolism, but I understood what it was talking about. And I also understood where I was at. So then I start reading the, uh, uh, the New Testament. I, I, I read the whole New Testament. I read it through two or three times. You weren't saved yet. You hadn't no, I was not saved yet. And I started to try to read the Old Testament, starting with Gen uh, Genesis. And after I got through past Adam and Eve, and then uh, I couldn't, that doesn't mean nothing to me, so I quit reading it. All I read was the New Testament. This went on for a couple of years. And uh, uh, some friends of ours not lived on the street, and they were born again. And they invited us to play cards. Now that was Dave and, Dave and Hope, Shirley, Shirley Hofius, Hofius. Yeah, yeah great, very close great, friends of great, ours, great, both yeah. of us. And he took us down to, uh, we went down to their house back and forth and visiting, became friends. And they wanted to take us to play cards on Friday night. So I said, okay, my wife wanted to go. We went. It was two other couples, Jim Lease and uh, uh, Marianne and M. Perrine. And all three couples were born again. Frank and he was not the only one, or my wife was, but I wasn't. So uh, I, I got friends with all of them, and they, they never said anything about Catholicism because I, I, I still wasn't going to church anywhere, you know, yeah, particularly. Yeah. <clears throat> sure. And uh, they never insisted on going to church or anything, but we all, they talked about the Lord a, a good bit. And so after a while, I told Dave Hovey, I says, you know, I says, I feel like I'm slipping away because I, I'm not reading as much as I did the New Testament, you know, and, and uh, he said, maybe what you need is a good Bible study. So he took us to some Bible studies from his church. You know, we went to him for a month or six weeks and uh, nothing nothing worked, you know, nothing just didn't click. And uh, so this went on for uh, the, the whole summer practically. And then we didn't go for a month, couple months. Then he calls me up, he says, I found a place we're going to. Where are we going? Never mind, just be ready quarter to seven. Where are we going, Dave? Never mind. <laughs> so, okay, I says, come pick, he come picked us up and he took us to this place and we went down in the basement, you know, and this guy comes down and he starts preaching on Genesis. And all of a sudden, 
my spirit leaped. I'm going to say my spirit literally leaped when I was down there. And, and when I, this guy came down, he started talking. And I knew that that was a place for me. I knew without a dot, without a shade of that, that I had, that was going to be my place. And that place was your place, down your basement. And crossing paths. Crossing paths. Thank you. And uh, you start teaching on it. And all of a sudden, the Old Testament start making sense to me. You know, you were teaching the first five books of the Bible. And uh, I said, wow, you know, then I, then I went home, I'm studying all that, you know, and, and uh, that, that's, that's how I, and also at that particular time when I was down here in that basement, and this was going on for about six months to a seven, maybe seven, eight months a year, and I'm thinking, he's got something I don't have. I, I, I couldn't put my finger on it. And I'm like, why is he different than me? <laughs> and all of us, it, eventually it hit me that, I wasn't born again, he was. And then I understood what born again was. And uh, at that particular time too, we were going to some concerts and uh, Phil Driscoll come in uh, in town and I went to his concert and I bought some of his tapes and stuff. And there was one tape particularly where the chorus was, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, King of all the world, I love you, Jesus. And I couldn't bring myself to say, I love you, Jesus, because I wasn't truly born again. And it convicted me. And between your uh, uh, way you were and, and between this thing, the two things, that the music, I just, I, I, every, every time I played that song, it got a little worse and a little worse. The, the, the inside of me got stronger. stronger. I shouldn't say worse, but oh, wow. stronger. And uh, one Easter morning, uh, my wife always on Easter morning had a tradition from her family where she made six or seven different things and we'd eat them. Wow. And uh, we were sitting there eating, eating these things Easter morning. She says, I'm going to put on a polka music. She loved polka music. I says, no, it's, Christ it's Easter morning. We're going to play some Christian music. And I went and grabbed the tape and it happened to be that tape. He starts singing that song, I Love You, Jesus. And all of a sudden, I just it just come over me. I start crying. I mean, I, was, I went in a living room bawling like a baby. I mean, it's just Hallelujah. crying. I said, okay, Lord. I said, okay, I give you, I give, give you my life to you. I give 150% to you. I didn't uh, want to say 100. Uh, I said 150%. I thought to myself, afterwards, how can I give 150%? <laughs> but anyhow, that's what I said to him. At that point, my life changed. It was just like I got lifted up. And I got, I got so... Uh, uh, I'm so so dedicated, so much love in me for that, that I wanted to tell everybody. I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I want to stand on top of the tallest building and share and shout out to the whole world that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Uh. And I start talking to my family about it. And I eventually got Marsha to come to our Bible study, my sister-in-law, and uh, she became born again. And uh, But anyhow, my stepfather... When I was, I always used to talk to my family. I, every gathering, I would bring up about Jesus Christ being my Lord and Savior, and everyone had to be saved. You had to change your ways, and, and he used to stand behind me, and go like this, and point at me. I was, well, you, you even was, lost it, huh? Yeah, but I, you uh, found it. Yeah, and uh, anyhow, uh, as time went on, Marcia became saved, and uh, uh, my wife, every, my family was not 100 percent saved, but some of them got saved in my family, you know. In fact, my stepfather, in the end, he got a stroke, and uh, years later, you and I went down, and, and he led his life. He gave his life to the Lord. Remember that? I yeah. went down, seen you him. You know, you know, when you think you're in people hear all these stories, Frank, uh, the Catholic Church could have planted some plant. You know, we, right. we remember that the church that may not be doing the doctrinal issue, maybe not what we agree on. You know what I'm saying? And I defend any church. I don't care what it is, but whether it be the Catholic or the Baptist or the Presbyterian or Methodist Church, you know, you've got to be born again according to John 3, 3, and you never heard the word born again in your particular church, right, at that time? I never heard the word born again until yeah. I come up here to share it. And, and let me just correct some people out there to, to encourage the pastors out there, and I speak from my experience too. Sometime a pastor could be preaching born again, but it could be going right over your fore, over your head. And I make this illustration years ago, and a lot of people know my story, but I had to travel to Pirates when I was down here in Newcastle with the American Legion and so forth. 
and I could be standing out in left field and someone could hit a home run. I'm just making an illustration, right? Yeah. And it, it's going over your head and the crap, people are shouting, right? But you never caught it. Well, mm -hmm. you could be in a church and a pastor could be preaching born again. It's defending the church, some churches, not all churches, right? And the funny somehow I end up where I'm at, somewhere along the line, someone planted the seed in my life and then some not planted in your life, right? Yeah. And then when you got, when you said you come to my Bible study, I, when you walked in, remember I said, there's a Joshua. Yeah. You remember the story on that, right? Yeah. And the main thing is, and then we started going to Bible studies. How many Bible studies a week did we go? Seven, seven Bible studies a week. I seven, tell, seven days a week. I tell people what that time? they just shake their head. What time? Six o'clock, right? No, oh, we was meeting at 5.30 five in the morning up Eaton Park. Man, I used to come home drunk at that time. Now I'm going to Bible oh, studies. I'm going so to Bible studies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, uh, I, you know, in any testimony, a lot of people say, well, you know, this man, you're a businessman now, right? Yeah. And, and you have an opportunity to tell people about Jesus, yes. right? When I invited you to go to Israel, what happened? I didn't want to go at first, you know, and... Uh, but you, you kept telling me, you know, you got to go, you got to go. So I, I said, all right. And uh, once, once I got over there, I just, I just, I was amazed. I, I, I did realize how much the Bible would come alive and, and what it meant to me. Uh, when you walk at the same places that Jesus walked and uh, seeing the same things that, that uh, the same places that Jesus was at, you know, Galilee and so forth, it just, it amazes me. One thing that really, that I did realize when the Bible talks about uh, Jesus uh, went from you know from Jerusalem to uh, to Galilee or you know to, to Capernaum or someplace, the distance I didn't realize how far it was. It wasn't just you know a mile or two. You're talking about sixty or seventy miles. They walked that all the time. It became real. It became real to me, and I realized that the, you know that what he had done over there, and uh, it, it it is an amazing experience. I. I I encourage anybody, anybody that has the means to go, to go. I, I would, yeah, like I says, I wouldn't mind uh, living over there. Yeah, we run a tour once a year, you know, and yeah. we're going to go back this year again. There's still openings on that. I want to go back to whenever you were started witnessing to your family. You know, sometimes we have to use wisdom, and I do, right? But when you had an opportunity to talk about Jesus, right, not the church, but Jesus. No, there's nothing wrong with the church per se, right? Right. But... You, you you saw somebody go like this, right? Well, I was told. My brother used to tell me, he says, Connie's doing this to you when you're talking about, right. about God and Jesus, you know. But I never let it bother me. I, I you know. But since you got saved, your brother got saved, right? Yeah. Some let, of your family? Uh, I, let me tell you some stories about that. I, I, You know, a lot of people talk to walk, but they don't walk to talk. And, and when you become born again, your life has to change. They has to they have to see yeah. something different. Sure. And uh, I had witnessed to my brother-in-law George for years, you know, and he was a religious man. He would pray before he ate every day, but he would not go to church because the church offended him and his family years ago over his father. And I, I used to tell him, George, I says, if you don't forgive the church, God's not going to forgive you. You cannot keep resentment in you Amen. according to the Bible, according to Jesus. Amen. And I kept witnessing to him, and, and uh, he never gave me an indication. He, yeah, one of these days he would say, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to do this, but he never, never gave me any indication that he was going to do that. And uh, he, he came to our banquet over at Moorfield Road at the Lutheran Church in the basement down there, and we had uh, the guy from Czechoslovakia, I think, I can't remember his name, give his testimony. And when the altar call, art, altar call came, there was 16 kids there from George Jr. They all went up, and my brother-in-law, George, jumped up and went up. He was the only adult that went up there and gave his life to the Lord. I had tears in my eyes, Don, when that happened, because I, it came totally as a surprise to me. And the man changed. He was a hard man to live with. My sister-in-law, you know, she, she went through some tough times with him. But uh, he died six, seven years later. He fell off a ladder painting a bank board in his driveway and smacked his head. And he's a believer. And uh, she wrote me a letter afterwards, about six months after he passed away, that the last six years of his life was the happiest of her life because of the way he changed. Wow. His life had changed. The way his demeanor, everything changed about him. And that's that's a sign of, of, of surrendering your life to Jesus. Remember what... In uh, the, uh, I think last week's show, or someone mentioned something about uh, Joyce read about your life has to change, and uh, 
And the same thing happened to a friend of mine. Uh, uh, I, I witnessed to him, and he was he was going to church off and on. He was Catholic, and his daughters were saved. And every time we they were close friends, as close as I am to you, and uh, we'd go to his house and would always talk about Jesus. I'd bring it up, and. Uh, he retired from, he was a truck driver. He retired from driving truck and they threw a party for him and they videotaped it. And he said, hey Frank, you gotta watch this videotape of my party. So we went in the living room, he put the tape in and I'm, I start watching it. And uh, they showed the guy sitting around his table eating and, and have, they have drinking a beer and out comes a belly dancer out of the door. She comes waltzing across and she drops the top off of her and I get up and I walk out of the living room and I says, I can't watch that. I said that that I just can't watch that. Wow! And uh, never said a word otherwise. But we got talking about something else, and uh, it was six seven months later. Uh, my wife made arrangements to for us to meet them up at Conneaut Lake. They lived in Bridgeville. That they're about sixty miles south of us, and uh, so <clears throat> we met them up there. And uh, as as they were walking down, they brought another couple with them. His wife Dolores, his niece, and her husband. And uh, so we got introduced, and the, the niece's husband grabbed me by the arm. He says, I got to talk to you. And I said, okay, pulls me on the side. And I'm, I'm thinking, what do I do? I don't even know this guy. You know, why do you, you know, the way he said it. He says, uh, what'd you do to Mike? I said, what do you mean, what'd I do to Mike? I didn't do nothing to Mike. Yes, you did. He says, I've been witnessing him for 10 years, never got to first base. Now all of a sudden he's talking about Jesus and how yeah. much he loves him. He says, and he said it was all because of you. Oh, see that? I said, I didn't do nothing. Oh, you're I, right, you didn't. I, I, it wasn't Holy, me, it was the Lord. It was the Holy Spirit. But I planted a seed and he saw my changed life. He you know, knew the way I was. That's, that's the nice thing about it. You know, you can be born again, be a Catholic, Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist. You know, sometimes people are getting the wrong impression on ministries out there. You know, we cannot, the Bible says that crossing paths in our ministry is to get people into the church. Amen. Get them into the, we're not a church per se. We're trying to get people into the yeah, church. Right. And uh, there, there's a problem going around this world that you can do anything you want and still go to heaven. You know, and there's no such thing as repentance today. Everything is absolutely, everything is just in turmoil today. The Ten Commandments are no longer, they're Ten Suggestions. And people are finding the Lord today that never found Him in their life. The Bible said in the last days, people would find the Lord that weren't even looking for Him. Well, I'm looking at me, people. I'm one and you're one too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You know, uh, this scripture, I always like 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. You know, all things become new. And here is a man that come to a Bible study, my Bible study, he saw something that we all should see. And he went and, and one day he got down on his hands and knees by Phil Drisco and who cares whether I planted, whether the Catholic right. Church or the Baptist or whatever, he got his name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now that's what all crossing paths is all about. It's just individuals sitting down, giving their testimony. You know, people out there, when you get saved, just be yourself. I don't mean what you did before. B.C., I call it before Christ and A.C. after Christ, okay? You pick up this Bible. Now, I challenge anybody out, denomination, preachers, priests, I don't care. I'm an associate pastor now because I have a covering. I need it, but I still have a ministry. We're on 39 states across the uh, country here on Crossing Pass on what they call Cornerstone Television out of Wall, Pennsylvania, 5.30 every Wednesday. And we don't have any live telethon. We've given away thousands of Bibles. Do you want a Bible out today? Call me, send me a letter or something. Crossingpass.org. You can go on there and watch every one of our television programs. But tell somebody. You can be the people that, uh, that you don't hear too much about in the Bible and go tell them about Crossing Pass. We want to get you into a church that is preaching Amen. the gospel. And if you have to drive 20 miles to find that church, Amen. that's what you want to do. Find a Bible study, two people. I don't care what Bible, but find one that you can understand a little bit. But I want to tell you something. Jesus is coming soon. And don't forget, I'm sitting here as a, a witness 40 years ago when I got saved, born again. I was a mainline denomination like him. I was a Methodist. I was baptized in water. And thank God, Methodists will go to heaven, can be baptized or can be saved and can be born again. 
But if I would die, I'd have went to hell just like you would have. Amen. Right? Yep. So I'm just telling you, people, pick up the Bible. Don't trust me. Don't trust your pastor, your priest. Pick it up yourself and read it and read it and ask Jesus today to come into your life. You say, Lord, I don't know whether you can forgive me because I've done so many things. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means all, everybody. Amen. Yep. And the Bible says, Matthew 6, 34, it says, Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of itself sufficient unto the day as the evil thereof. Live one day at a time. So don't worry about tomorrow because you may not be here. But you're going to be in heaven and you're going to be in hell. And you're not going to be prayed out of hell. There's no such thing as being prayed out of hell. There's no such thing as praying anybody to anybody except Jesus. Amen. Jesus said in John 14, yep. 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And you say, well, I don't know whether it's... Pick up the Bible. Just, just pick up the Bible. Call me. Call anybody in our ministry. We have absolutely people donating their time, donating their time, to answer the phone 24 seven, listen to me, please. I beg you from my very heart, if God can take a gambler, an alcoholic, a liar, an adulterer, and he's forgiven me, and I actually believe God's forgiven me for everything in my entire life. Amen, yes. I believe it, I receive it, John 1, 12. To all those who receive him, gave me power to become sons of God, even to those who believe on his name. Oh, wow. Telephone number, 724-981-7777. International, 1-855-981-9777. Crossingpass.org, go on the internet, pick a program. We got pro football players on there, pro football players. We got various pe people on there. They're sharing their testimony. And listen, you could be the next guest on Crossing Pass TV. Amen.